Welcome to the Steve and Carlos Show. Your host, Steve Scott and Carlos. I like, I like to throw in in Carlos because I forgot to say in Carlos. I was so excited yeah, about making the video of it. You know what? You're, we're co-hosts, man. It should be Steve and Carlos show co-hosts. As, so good morning, everybody. Right, Carlos? Yes, good morning. So today, good morning to the Ricky Lake show. I mean, the Steve and Carlos show. <laughs> so today, Thursday, May 21st, and it's a beautiful day, is it not, everybody? Right? Thumbs up, right? Nice day. So we've got a great show for you today. We're going to start, uh, you know what, let me just say one quick thing. <clears throat> I loved the news I heard driving in. You know, with, this, with me commuting to Stanford lately, it's been such an easy commute. I mean, I, and I wanted to hear news all the time in the beginning. I don't want to hear it all now. But in the beginning, so I would listen to NPR or 880 AM radio. And those of you who are old enough, you know about 8 AM radio, right? Um, so I was listening to that and go back and forth between the two this morning. And the news about what's happening right now with the migration coming out of New York City, I mean, it's it's really phenomenal, guys. It, this is a huge opportunity for all of you, not just for buyers coming wanting to come out into the suburbs, companies, companies looking for a satellite office. What I heard this morning, looking for sat medium to larger size companies looking for satellite offices in the suburbs and wanting to sign a two to three year lease to see where this is all going to go with the option to renew after three years. That a lot of these companies are going to come here, guys, and they're not going to leave. This is going to be a great opportunity for you. So anyway, I was really excited about that news. Yeah. So got a quick yeah, little video I, clip for you. Uh, go ahead, Carlos. No, go ahead. No, no, you talk. No, no, go ahead. Let, show, let's see the video. <laughs> okay, we got a quick video to show you. Okay, video time. Thank you. Uh, we're missing sound. Let's do a oh. voiceover. Oh no, we'll do it with the sound this time. Okay. Okay then, so isn't that adorable? Isn't that cool? That that was a coaching moment, guys. <clears throat> I truly think that's amazing. And I think it's so appropriate that um, the character who's the coach is blonde, just like our Jennifer Henry, who is running our coaching program. Uh, you know, that's been going on for about three, almost three years now, Productivity Coaching. And it is a phenomenal program, guys, turning around lives. Jen Henry is changing lives single-handedly. Um, and people are really getting into production quickly once they dive into her program. And today we have got two guests from the coaching program that we'd like to discuss what's been going on in their world and what they've pulled away from coaching. So I'd like to start with Yinan, yeah. Yinan Danilowitz. Uh, Yinan um, is from the Stanford Market Center. Yinan, can you unmute yourself, please? There you go. Morning, Yinan, how are you? Morning, hello, everyone. So, you know, I know you've had some great success. If you could just tell us quickly, how long have you been in the coaching program and what's going on in your world right now with, um, I know you've got a lot to talk about with open houses specifically. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've been in coaching program, I think since day one when I joined Keller Williams. So that almost marks two years ago. So I just finished my continued education and got my license renewed yesterday. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's been great to to be a member of uh, Jen's team. And uh, I learned a lot through her coaching uh, sessions. Uh, so when the COVID-19 hit us in March, at the end of March, and uh, so prior to that, I had some great opportunities to host the open house. And that uh, gives give me some great lead. Uh, I, after the open house, I'm just following what I learned from, you know, the, the training to follow up, send emails, and also during the open house, I try to uh, have a report with the 
uh, customer and try to gather some information, basic information, what they're looking for. So uh, when I open up, I can kind of have a uh, target, uh, like let's say price range, share some uh, listings, active listings with them. So surprisingly um, in April, sometime in April, so I finally got back, uh, two ladies came back to me. So they already, I guess, at the beginning, they were like, um, uh, not, as, I guess, because of the COVID-19 make them kind of scared and not want to come out. And then they reach out to me. So I did the buyer consultation through a Zoom. So because with <clears throat> Jen's help, I have all that package ready and just tailored towards what they're looking for. And uh, it turns out that the buyer consultation is very successful. They, they signed the representation with me the next day. So we go from there. So, wait, Enon, so you did your, your buyer consultation on Zoom, right? Correct. And then they signed with you the next day? Yes. That's fantastic. That is really awesome. Yeah, because I already learned the materials, what I needed to include, what you know, to make it specific to their case, I guess, make them feel comfortable to move forward. Kind of like, uh, no, you know the market, you know what's going on. And also a lot of the uh, uh, seminars I attended in the office from like uh, Paul, from Tammy, you know, that give us uh, knowledge of also the uh, finance world. So that also helps Absolutely. when you talk. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that helps me through those two deals. One closed this Tuesday, that's a cash buyer, so that closed quicker. And I have another deal, will it's closed by the end of June. That's amazing. That is amazing. I love hearing success coming from open houses because in the beginning, like you said, you had these leads and you started to follow up with them. Yes, COVID hit, but you know, that's how we all you know, react initially when we start to reach out to these leads. We may not hear from them immediately, but you kept on them and you kept bringing them valuable you know, information of value and then they eventually responded to you, correct? Correct. That's awesome. Initially, I did not hear back at all. I was like, oh, that, you know, I lost them. But I mean, once you plant the seed and you, yes. you know, you continue to send the valuable information to them, when they are ready, they will definitely get back to you. So I guess, yes. uh, I guess that's an encouragement for all of us. When we first yes. try to initiate this relationship, it takes a while. It's not an immediate response. They jump on you. Okay, I'm ready. It's not the case. That's what I right. learned from, from what I see. Yeah. Right, so you, you sought out these open houses, right? You didn't have the listing, so you did somebody else's open house at their house in Norwalk and Stanford, correct? You sought them out and you made it happen. Yes, I was very lucky. Uh, those two open houses, uh, uh, location is great and the condition is wonderful. So we got, uh, I see this beginning of this year, the real estate market is hot. Whatever yes. I did, like those two open houses, I got a tremendous turnaround. You know, that I got like one, 15 sets of people come in. I cannot even, you know, and there's also some like uh, agents bring their clients in. So I was so busy trying to keep up with all this, you know, paperwork. Sure. And also another one that's in Norwalk. Another one in Stanford is downtown Stanford. And that's what I host is the, the first open house for the listing. So mm -hmm. I'm really, uh, uh, you know, grateful or appreciate those listing agents give me this opportunity. And yeah, that, that's that, wonderful. So that gives me, yeah. Yeah, and it sounds like you've got a bunch of other leads still that you're following up on that could come to fruition. So that's, that's really great. So yes, we, wish you, we wish you the best and you've done a great job, you know, and keep it up. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. But she, she does all the hard work. And, and what I want to point out to everybody is that she has a very intense full-time job and is homeschooling right now. Yeah. She's a busy, busy lady. That's amazing, Yinan. Thank you for sharing your story, Yinan. Thank you. Carlos, yes. and now, Carlos you now have another guest for us. We do have another guest. Um, I don't know if you guys know him or ever seen him on any Zoom session before. But his name is Bagan. Go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about how Jen's coaching has benefited you specifically. Morning, uh, Bogdan Stefanide. Um, also, a dual career. Uh, I work as an IT salesman for a rental company in Norwalk, Connecticut. And uh, 
I joined uh, Keller Williams last uh, February, and I started with Jen uh, probably the next week or so. And I'm uh, in her private uh, uh, productivity coaching. And uh, since uh, this uh, virus hit us, uh, I'm trying to get as much uh, information and uh, training as I can. Even though uh, I, be, I started my journey in real estate probably 11 years ago, helping someone do BPOs, if anyone remembers BPOs, and taking pictures and uh, then uh, led me into real estate investing. I was flipping uh, houses between 2013 and 2017 when I decided to get my license. But I realized that uh, I'll rather focus on selling than being just uh, an investor. So came uh, to Keller Williams and uh, it's great to be part of this family. And I'm sure that our founder, Gary Keller, had uh, envisioned the word family when he said the, the family, we have the family reunion every year because it feels like a family. You know? You're comfortable awesome. uh, within your family, so you can do great things. So that's where uh, Jen comes in and uh, helped me, even though I had previous experience. Uh, a Greek ph philosopher said, uh, "I know that I don't. Uh, uh, I know that I know nothing. So it's better to have that mindset and uh, grow than uh, think of, you know, everything and uh, make make mistakes." And yeah. I, I heard, Bogdan, sorry, Carlos, I heard Bogdan that, you know, you have not missed one session of Jen's since this all started. Yes. Uh, actually, I've been missing the Saturday ones before I used to take them because uh, that's when I was able to concentrate more. But usually the Saturdays are repeats. So unless it's something that I want to dive in more, uh, I'll be in, but lately I've been missing the Saturday ones, but Monday okay. to Friday, okay. I'm there, I'm here, I'm at uh, 4.30, if I'm not uh, out to taking pictures for other Keller Williams agents, or uh, you know, going on to listing appointments. Great, awesome. That's awesome. So tell me, tell me essentially um, how you see in the last um, in the last couple of months how Jen how Jen's coaching has impacted your business. I mean, uh, Jen's uh, coaching impacted my business uh, from the early days when I started with her, because like I said, you don't know everything, so you need somebody to guide you through, and that's the that's the <clears throat> role of a coach to be on the sidelines and look at you and correct, fine tune uh, where you need. So that's what uh, Jen's been doing uh, for me and for everybody in the coaching group. And I think I'm gonna uh, leave her with a challenge. Um, maybe she'll need to start her own uh, bold version. And I even came with a acronym, uh, SALT, which means, uh, sell on low demand so maybe we'll all work together on that yeah, yeah. that's certainly something we're focusing on right now as a group and 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 thanks so much for that i know we don't have uh much time left but i i just want to go ahead uh thank you both for for your testimonies um and your um your insight right i actually started with Binan and um stephen pratt i had a look at his name i was like is this him yeah that's him uh we both i I think attended the same um, uh, orientation. So that was pretty exciting. So every time I see them, I kind of have like a soft spot in my heart, but I just want to, I, I just want to say this. I remember that I was, I, I was going to my first buyer session and I was just going literally with like a pen and, and I was ready and, and excited. And Jen is like, where are you going? And I was like, Oh, I've got my first buyers, uh, my first buyer's uh, consultation. And she's like, what are you doing? Like, what's your goal? And I was like, ah, you know, I'm going to show them some houses, you know? And, and the point is that she was like, no, you're not like you, this is what you have to do. And I ended up getting that first buyer signed, but just remember that I think that uh, a coach's role sometimes is very unseen. Right. 
and everybody knows uh, how many of, of you guys who know who Clifton Herring is? Raise your hands. Probably no one, right? Uh, well, his nickname was Pop, and he was the guy who cut Michael Jordan from the varsity team way back in high school. And he cut Michael Jordan because he said, no, he needs to work on himself first. And if it wasn't for that, maybe Michael Jordan would have not worked as hard as he did to get on that roster that next year, right? And so uh, when, when you think about people like that, very few people think about, you know, Vince Lombardi, Phil Jackson, Bill Belichick. They just kind of think about the big names in front of the screen, right? But I think that... Uh, I, I'm a huge fan and I'm a huge believer that you need a coach behind you and we're excited and, and we're blatantly saying, Hey guys, this is the time to, this is the time to press down. This is the time to focus on your business and you need to do it. Uh, and, and if you need help and, it, and, and if you need some guidance and someone to say, how do I get my business to that next level? It's our very own Jennifer Henry. Um, she doesn't like when I call her Jennifer Henry. She likes Jen Henry. Sorry about that. So that's it. That's what we wanted to leave you guys with. We hope that you found it as benefit. Steve, did you find anything? That's awesome. Great. Great for that. I appreciate everything you just said, Carlos. And how about a round of applause for Jen and what she's doing with this group? I think she deserves oh, it. Thank you, everybody. Yes. You know what? The, the real thing is that they, they do all the work. I'm just here to guide them and uh, direct them in whatever way I can. And uh, you know, Bogdan also has a full-time job. So these are two people that are fully committed and it's an honor to coach them and everybody in my group. And uh, it's been an interesting couple of months, but watch what everybody in our group is doing because I think you guys will all be surprised. They've been working really hard. Yeah, they are, they are rocking it. So and keep it up, Jen. We appreciate you very much. <laughs> So, can I, uh, on to Marty Miller. Can I share oh, sorry, ahead, my Bobby. screen for a second? Can I share? I just want to share this. It's a quote and, uh, by Brian Tracy. It says, invest 3% of your income in your self-development in order to guarantee your future. I like it. That's I like it a lot. Thank much, Thanks for Thank sharing. Ben. Okay, so moving on. Today's the 21st. Silly of me not to say it's profit share day. Woohoo! Yeah, right? Can't keep track of what day it is anymore. It's nuts. Anyway, congratulations, all you guys, for profit share. <clears throat> so moving on to Marty Miller, Mr. Adonis. So today, Marty's going to do kind of a deep dive with us. We're going to continue with designs that we've been doing. He's going to show us how to create a Facebook open house graphic and a just listed postcard. segment by actually creating good afternoon kelly williams and welcome back to the kw command 66 day challenge 3.0 day at 39 so today we're going to wrap up our designs segment by actually creating two different assets kind of putting together everything we've learned over the past couple days um, i'm going today to create a social media facebook post for an open house and then we're going to create a print postcard for a just listed to kind of walk you through what the actual processes look like based upon everything that we've learned over the last three days. So let's start our social media post. We're going to click on the plus sign at the bottom right. We're going to click on social and then create design. From there, we are going to choose a open house template. So let's come down on the left hand side to open house. We see it to believe it. I like this one. So we're going to use that and click on use. And from there, this grid has four different slots for photos, plus a area in the center for text. So you can see the four different photos here. I've got my DBA in the bottom right, and then I've got a circle here for text to be entered. So the first thing I wanna do is change out these photos. So uh, right now, KWLS, the um, bringing in the listings from KWLS to designs is down right now. So typically I'd be able to come in here, search for an address, and then I would have all the photos of my listings show up. So the workaround for that is just to go back to images. I'm gonna click on images. I actually have the images of several of my uh, listings that saved to my Google Drive. So let's go in there and find those listing photos. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose. Let's say I want to highlight the fact that it's in Cinco. I like this one because of the open door. It That house had a great kitchen. Let's see, 
Uh, maybe great room looking into the kitchen. Let's do this one. And then it had the pool shot. Let's do this one. All right. So just chose four photos to be brought in. I just clicked on all four that I wanted it to be brought in. So you're going to start to see those populate. So here's one, two, three, and four photos that show up. And let's just go through and we're going to place replace each one of these photos with these four photos here. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the top left photo. I'm going to come over to the one of the front door and I see this replace image arrow. I'm going to click on that. So it replaces that image. Let's come over. Oops, I don't know how that happened. Let's get rid of that guy. I'm going to come over here and click on the second one and let's click on the replace for the kitchen. Next, I'm going to come down to the bottom one. Let's click there and let's add in the pool. And from there, let's click on the bottom right. And I want to replace that with a Cinco Ranch. So there you go. So I have my four images. Let me get rid of this. Um, I think there is a photo quality issue right now because these are photos that I actually pulled down from my MLS personally. And I think they had already been shrunk down to um, basically to, to, to be optimized for things like mobile viewing and such. So I want to make sure I used high res photos. Obviously, you can tell these are not the, the highest res photos. So I probably would not use these. And yet just kind of an example of how to replace those four images. Next, I want to get rid of this DBA logo, so I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on Delete. I'm going to go into my library where I have my DBA, and I'm going to click on it. It brings it in here full size, and I get that cross emblem. I'm going to click and drag that logo down here to the bottom corner. It's a little big, so I'm going to click on this top left dot and drag. So I'm holding down the mouse key, and I'm dragging slowly so that it kind of resizes and I'll put it right there in the bottom right. Next, I have this see it to believe it. I want to put the date and time down here towards the bottom. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on the see it to believe it. It's actually two separate text boxes in this example. So I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to click on the up arrow to make sure that I keep these in the same alignment as one another and as they originally were. So I'm just clicking the up arrow. It's moving see it up. See it too up. Now I'm going to click on Believe It, and it's going to move that up as well. The font that we are using in this um, example is the uh, Open Sans, I believe is what it was called. So I want to add in a text box down here. So I'm going to click on Text. Let's do Subtitle. I'm going to then click on the text. And I'm going to change it from Lotto. I'm going to start searching for that open sans. Here it is. And let's just go with that one. Let's see, maybe bold it to make it look similar. Um, that's pretty close. And I'm going to then drag it down just a touch. I'm going to go ahead and click on the typewriter button here. And I'm going to put open house. And second line is Thursday, uh, let's say Saturday, 1, 3, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'm going to click on Save Changes. And then I need to resize that, obviously. So let me click on the box. I'm going to change the font size. Let's see a 14. I can go bigger than that. Let's go 18. I can still go bigger than that. I'll just keep going until I get a font size that looks good here. Let's see, oops, let's see what, uh, let's see what that one looks like. So I want to center this font as well. So I'm going to move this arrow over here and then drag the entire thing to the middle. You can see that blue line shows up. That's how I know I am centered directly there. And then I want to come up here to the top on text alignment and click on center. From there, I can actually drag this right button out just a little bit further. I'm going to drag the left out a little bit further. So I'm kind of at the very corners of this circle. And let's make that just a little bit bigger of a font. So let's go from 26 up to 30. I bet I can go just a little bit bigger. There's 34. All right, perfect. So now I have an image that says, see it to believe it. Open house, Saturday 1-3, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I've got the four photos replaced. And there are the four listing photos. 
<coughs> excuse me, um, and then I have my DBA logo in the bottom right. I can come up here and change the name of this graphic. So I can say open house. Um, I'm not sure which this was Lodge Meadows, I think. Lodge Meadows, Saturday uh, 1 3. Okay, so that's what the file is going to now be named. And I can come through and click on download. I'm going to post this to social media. So I want a JPEG, high resolution, start to download. And I'm going to wait for just a couple seconds. And pretty here shortly in the bottom left, I will have a document that shows up that my file has been downloaded. Here it is. So then I could come into my Facebook page and let's just say I wanted to throw it here on my um, page and just put in a photo. I would pull from my downloads, which I just did. I'm going to sort by date. Which one? Here's the one that was just created. I could click on open. And there is the asset that I just created within KW command ready to go to post to my Facebook page. So that's how simple that is. I will uh, tomorrow we're actually going to launch campaigns. So tomorrow I'll show you how to actually schedule a post like that to go into um, Facebook, but you could post it to go out a few days. And you can see now these images have cleared up. I'm not sure why they were blurry at first, but once we saved it and downloaded it, it looks like they have now cleared up and look pretty sharp there. So again, I'm just going to do file save and I am now done with this version of my asset. So I now have the Facebook one done. So I'm going to click on done. It's going to take me back into command. And the second thing I told you to do is a just listed postcard. So let's run through what that would look like. I would click on the plus sign, print, create design. And obviously, guys, creative, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know what I mean? I'm making some very basic changes just to kind of show you what can be done. But you guys can utilize everything that you have learned so far and make it very, very, um, you know, a creative style of postcard or Facebook graphic or whatever you're creating. So um, I have now gone into templates just listed. I want to do a just listed postcard. I really like these portrait style. I think it catches the eye a lot more than your standard postcard. I think we get a lot of these and, you know, they kind of end up in the trash. I really don't even really look at them. But the portrait one, because it's just oriented differently, it kind of snags my eye. I, I think I would probably look at this more than I would look at the standard one. That's just my personal opinion. So let's click on use. Now look at the number two. That means that this is a two page asset. So when we come in and click on use at the bottom here, let me close this download out. At the bottom of the WeBrand editor, you're going to see that there are actually two pages that we're going to need to edit on this document. Here's page one. And now I click on this number two. Here is number two, the second one that we need to create. So we're going to go into the first one. I'm going to click on that. I am going to minimize these pages so that I can come in and start editing it. It says this one's the keeper, 1050 Heather Lane. Here's the information on the property. So let's just click on that photo. I'm going to come in and click on add. I already have uh, some of these images that I just uploaded. So let's say I wanted to replace it with the pool image. I think that's a pretty sharp one. And I would want to come in here, double click on this text. I can go to the typewriter and I can change this to 23106. Save changes. Actually, this is 1906. Just kidding. Wrong listing. Uh, 1906 Dawn Hollow was this listing. So I would come in, click on that. There's 1906. Let me click on Heather Lane. I can go to the typewriter there and put Dawn Hollow. Let's make sure that it fits appropriately. And it does. I'm going to move it up just a touch. There we go. All right, and that's home. Uh, I don't remember offhand. I am fairly certain that it was a three bed 2.5 bath. So let me go to the typewriter and click on 2.5 bath, um, whatever, 2306 square feet. And I think it was built in, I don't know, 2005. So I can click on save changes. And there I have. That was really simple, right? I have now changed the front of this postcard with a photo of the listing. Um, I've got the property specifics here and then the address. I'm going to click on next page and it's going to show page two that we need to go in. 
and you can see there's a few things that we need to go in here and change. So the first thing is the DBA. So, so and here's one thing I told you I was going to teach you today. You can see how when I'm clicking here on any of these boxes, I'm only getting, well, okay, just kidding. Let's click on the DBA. Yeah, and all right, so originally I was getting just this box. It wasn't allowing me to click on anything else. So what I need to do is, is kind of move this box to the very bottom of my layers. And I can do that by clicking on Arrange, and I'm going to send that box to the bottom. So once I've done that, then it becomes easier to edit all of the assets that are on top of it. Or it should. There we go. All right, so I can delete that DBA. I'm going to come to my library, bring in my DBA. Let's shrink it down just a little bit. Um, white, especially if this is going to end up being a white postcard, does not look good. So I'm going to delete that out. I'm going to delete the placeholder. And let's bring in the charcoal version. And we'll drop that right on top. Make sure that it is appropriately sized. And there we go. OK. It needs to be over just a little bit. All right, contact me for more details or to schedule a tour, that's fine. That's not me. So I'm gonna hover over my agent photo. Again, the replace image is there, so I can click on that. It replaces the, that image of that young lady with mine. And then I can come down here and I can go to the typewriter and pull out your name. And they were doing all caps, so let's just stay with that. Marty Miller, save changes real estate team name i go back up to typewriter and highlight that delete it and put in my team name save changes and then i can come down again go through the typewriter and pull all of this out so i would just do my cell and then I could go through and put in my website, my email, and I can do all that just to save some time. So I'll click on Save Changes, and then I would have the back of this postcard saved as well. Now, here's one thing. When we do postcards, we have to save them as separate. So I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, let's name our postcard. So this is 1906 Don Hollow, just listed. Okay, and then I'm going to click on Download. I need this as a uh, PDF for the postcard. I need to only download page one. I have to download when I'm doing postcards because I'm going to upload them as 